I'm back. Well, <laughs> here we are. Finally back. Hmm. Where have I been? I don't know. But uh, anyway, I'm back. <laughs> Look what I've got today. Now, this is a Marshall uh, Model 2555X. It's not the original, but I wouldn't worry about that. We'll come on to that a little bit later. But actually, I just want to mention that I've got a, a series of uh, amplifiers coming up uh, to be sort of reviewed or prodded at inside and things like that. Played, maybe, probably, uh, and all that sort of stuff. And, and this is one of them. Uh, so, so this is the one for this review. I've got down there one of them little Fender bass things, whatever they call them, bass breaker, there, that's it. But it's only a little 7 watt thing, and there's good reason for showing you that. That's a, a Class A amplifier. And I talked about Class A amplifiers before, somewhere down there on the other videos. And there's another amp I'm going to uh, open up and show you and then uh, play, so it's a, it's a, it's a full-blown review. And you can just about see it over the top there. And that's a... Uh, a Soraya tone uh, HRM and uh, that's basically an amplifier that sort of emulates or simulates uh, a Dumble clone. Now the thing is I'm not saying it, it's a Dumble <laughs> and, and factually each Dumble that they made was different anyway uh, you know tailored for the particular guy. I like to think that that one's tailored for me and when you get to see inside it you'll realize just how close that product is to the real deal yeah that should all be very interesting oh and there's one more thing i'm going to be uh, reviewing not in this video but uh, subsequent ones and that's this uh, hot pot for your crybaby war you can see there now the thing is this is in all the new ones but the old 1960s and early 70s, uh, mid 70s crybabies uh, are very different than what they are, what you buy today. In fact, they're very different. I've got a, a sort of 66 or 67 one out there. And I've also got a, a 75 one, which I, I recently bought. But I've also got a newer one too. So what we're going to be doing on one of the reviews is uh, we'll fit this to something. I don't know what. <laughs> uh, but it, it's really a a review about, uh, you know, the things like different era crybabies, of the ones that I own, I'm not going to buy any more, but I think it's good because the fact is that you never see these 60s and early 70s crybabies around, you know, are they, were they really any good? Were they better or worse? Well, you'll have to wait and see. <laughs> I think the other thing is that I thought was quite funny, if you read this quickly, it says hot potty. <laughs> I like a bit of hot potty, don't you? <laughs> anyway, we're not here for hot potty. We're here for the review of the JCM 2550-2555X Silver Jubilee reissue. And that's the owner's manual. That's exciting, isn't it? Yeah. Now, this amp has been reviewed by lots and lots of different people. No, not this one, but this model has been reviewed by lots and lots of different people. You've got the, the twiddlers. You've got the, I like the colour. You've got the, uh, <laughs> the resellers, best thing in the world. Everybody wants these. And then you've got me. Ah, well, what we're going to do with this one is we're going to take a look at it. We're going to whip that chassis out, as we always do on my inside and outside reviews. And uh, we're going to have a closer look at it. Then I'll show you the front and the back. Then we'll play it outside in the studio. That way. Yeah. Now, before we get down to business, so to speak, if you look in the Marshall uh, intro, yeah, it's all here. I mean, it tells you the Silver Jubilee came out in 1987. It's a long time ago. It's nearly as old as me. Oh, my God. <laughs> And it, it says it was based on the JCM 800. I can confirm that it was based on the JCM 800. Now, you can go and buy a JCM 800 today, whether it be the original or a copy. You know, the newer one. The reissue, for want of a better word. But, well, you could put a pedal in front of it and you could claim that it's the same as this one. 
It isn't. It's not the same. And that's one of the reasons why these 2555 uh, series uh, of amplifiers, uh, the originals fetch a fair amount of money. But these are not cheap, I don't think. That these are cheap. In England, by the way, it's about £1,100 less price. God knows what it is in America. Probably double. Lastly, of course, you've got the, the protagonists of these amps. That's a great word, isn't it? I have to look up what it means sometime. You know, the likes of the Slashies of this world. Great player. Seen Slash in Stoke. You can go and watch it. And uh, people like Bonamassa. He was a guy that used one of these. I don't know if he still does. But there, there's loads of others. And, uh, yeah, they don't choose them for no reason. They don't choose them just because it's silver. So let's get down and uh, get a bit nearer to the amp. Hold on. Oh, and by the way, this review is just for a, a mate of mine that uh, we talk occasionally. Uh, he's got one of these and he lives sort of down Bristol Way. He'll know exactly who he is. Yeah. Well, here we go. As I'm taking the back off here, uh, this back cover, you'll notice that, uh, let's take that last screw out. One of the things that's changed over the years on Marshall amps are these screws. Yeah, let me put that out of the way. Now, typically, these screw holes have got uh, a metal insert into the into the wood, which is really cool. In the old amps, you know, you used to strip out because they were just screwed into wood. But that's only four of the five screws, actually. This one that's here, as you can clearly see, is regular into the wood. So let's flip the back of the amp off. As you'll see as we go, uh, the inserts. All pretty good stuff. I really like to see that sort of thing, don't you? Other things that have changed, uh, well actually the mounting screws haven't changed, that's for the chassis and there's four of them. But this actual uh, bottom foot isn't the same as the early ones. Uh, this one's actually sort of made of rubber and things like that. The originals I think were more plasticky, just so you know. Now just before we do move on, uh, down inside the chassis, I'll have that out any second, I just wanted to show you the serial number, uh, which is quite an interesting one actually. Uh, it's, uh, made, it's 2015, this was made in the UK by the way, oh it says so, fancy that. Uh, week 34, it was number one, off number one, well actually there's more to it than that, but I won't bore you with that. But as far as I'm concerned then, we'll call this the number one amp, right? That sounds like a great idea. Look. Go and have a look and see if yours has got one of one. <laughs> this should be interesting. Notice it's also say Roche as well, by the way. Okay, well, here we go. We've got the chassis out. And there's one or two features on this uh, amp that make it uh, quite nice, really. Uh, one of the things is you've got a real choke, just like the old uh, tube amp that they made. It's got a big, fat power transformer and a big, fat output transformer. That's power. That's output. It makes the amplifier quite heavy, uh, so you need to bear that in mind. And uh, yeah, it, it honestly is not that light. You've got three ECC83s, they say, and they are, if we take a quick look, they are Marshall 0209, this one says, uh, Valvo 0055. So we've got three of them in total. Two of them with no shroud and one with a shroud, but they all were basically the same because I checked earlier. <laughs> but as well as that, uh, it seems that Marshall have moved up a peg with these uh, tubes from some of the ones that they used to fit. Let's uh, whiz one of these out and take a look. Hold on. And there it is in all its glory. Uh, quite interesting really. It's a tongue saw. I haven't seen them using many uh, tongue saw tubes. They tend to come from other places. This one's made in Russia. It says very nicely there. And uh, let's have a look what else we've got on here. Week 15.04, or 04.15, depending which way around it is. Who knows? Marshall stamped EL34, part number 00104. By the way, these standoffs have got considerably stronger uh, now that on this amp, uh, which is also quite nice, really. Uh, they're made by Balton. Here's another little nice feature on this amp that wasn't on the original. And uh, this is all to do with uh, bias. So now you can bias these tubes up 
down there with these two controllers on a, on a meter, you know, like so or like so. You've got the uh, two types of tube here. So if you was to fit, uh, I don't know, EL34, it's, it's, they're all going to be in this range here for their measurement. It says here, current per side. So here's a quick uh, overall view of the chassis. And anybody that's looked inside any of the older amps will notice straight away that, hey, this one's different. <laughs> it's still a Marshall, but not as we know it. You've got great big fat transformers, like I said. You've got one main PCB, small one down here for the knobs on the front, and a small one down at the back here for the inputs and outputs. And uh, really not that much else. Oh, you've got another little board over there, if you can see that. We're going to zoom in anyway uh, to look after the bias. So let's get a bit closer to it, and then we can start seeing some of the things uh, about this amp and why it's different and things like that. Now Marshalls, as most people know, has been around a very long time, uh, since the sort of mid 60s or maybe even a little bit before that. But uh, they've always had a, a strong relationship with uh, diagonal transformers. And this amp actually is no exception because there's a diagonal transformer. You can see the model and the rest, don't bore you with all that. Okay, well the power transformer is that way and the wires come off into the main board here. So what we've got is the usual sort of stuff. But we've got this little board at the top. As you can see, it's been sort of crowbarred onto the main board. And uh, that basically is to do with the bias that we were looking at earlier. You've got a number of fuses in here as well. You can one, two, three there. Uh, it's all very nice. It comes in. We'll probably have a bit of rectification here somewhere. No doubt. And it will move across that away towards the preamp and the power amp. In fact, the first of the preamp tubes is there, right down there. You can see. So, all really nice. And this is this is off the uh, power tubes, which start there. Now, it always amazed me about these amps uh, when I used to look into them uh, about how some of these little components were standing off the board and things like that and I did have one of them where the legs were touching but I was quickly corrected by Marshall saying that I oh, yeah, makes no difference because it's part of the same connector so if you look inside your amp and you see things like that uh, don't be too uh, dismayed because fact is it doesn't make any difference <laughs> that rectification by the way is down here you can see very similar to how it used to be, but on a different sort of board. The ST1 board is no more, or if it is, it isn't in this one. Okay, I moved along a bit, and uh, we've got the balance of the preamps, tubes that is. One, two, and the third one, which we've already looked at. But you can see the layout, it's all very nice really. It's uh, flow solder mounting, uh, these components. You can just tell. And uh, I don't know, maybe these tube sockets were put in differently because they look as if they'd been actually soldered uh, by hand. The other ones don't. These look as if they were done on a machine. But those four there, up there, look like they were they're done the other way, so to speak. You'll notice the quality of the board is pretty exceptional, really, if you want the truth. And, uh, hey, by the way, this one was tested by Anita. How are you doing, Anita? Good to see you. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's a very high-quality board. Uh, looks like uh, double-sided, probably. And uh, not much you can really say about it, except it doesn't look like the old uh, JCM800 board, of course. So what? That's one thing Marshall always talk about when they're making uh, these uh, later uh, X series or reissues, you know, like the 1987X and the 2555X or even the uh, JCM800X. The boards uh, are not really the same, 
the results the same, but the boards are not the same. And that's really because of the legislation and the rest that, that everybody has to put up with these days uh, uh, regarding safety and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, uh, legislation for the sake of legislation sometimes. Uh, but that's not always true. Some, some amps uh, do need a lot of protection. You wouldn't want to get killed, would you? Looking at the components, though, you can see they're all high quality. There's nothing in this amp that's had, that's had you know, any sort of shortcuts, so to speak. Oh, look, it's even got a little relay down there for flipping the... Uh, it, that's probably for flipping the channels, if you can see that. Yeah. I'll have to take a look at the circuit. But it's all good. I like the flyers, too. These are quite nice. They don't move. They actually push in and stay in, by the way, on those type of connections, not like on some amps I've seen that it can just pull off. Uh, so I like that as well. Well, there it is. You've got this little door to board. I think that's what they call them these days. And it links across into the main board. So if you get any problems with any of this lot, I guess you could change the component or buy a board from Marshall. I'm quite sure that Marshall have these parts available for some time. You will notice... Uh, that there's a couple of the pots that are pull pots. There's one. There's another. So they have their place. Don't know how you'd go on for replacing them. Maybe Marshall will have them in stock and things like that. Maybe they won't. <laughs> You'll only find out when you need one. Uh, so not much to say about that. Once again, the quality's fine. You know, I don't see any problems with the quality of the of the amp at all. And I, I think that's a very important aspect and one of the main reasons why I flip the lid on these things and uh, show you what it's like inside because some manufacturers I am telling you don't want you to see inside this one is absolutely impeccable it's awesome I haven't found a single thing wrong with it as you know it's just absolutely pristine okay well lastly we've got the output transformer uh, goes to this board across the top here for all the various uh, speaker settings or speaker out should I say it's screened which I like to see as well and once again it's a Dagnell transformer D5118TRX Rush compliant thanks very much TXOP0029 that's the part number I guess not much to say about it except to say that it's probably pretty similar to what's in a lot of amps a lot of martial amps that is okay well here we go on the outside at the back uh, the loudspeaker connections first we've got a 16 ohm here we've got 1 8 ohm or 2 16 ohms and we've got 1 4 ohm or 2 8 ohms so it's a pretty good array of uh, speaker uh, choices there that's going to help most people um, next up we've got a, a DI yeah, so out it comes. Class 2 wiring, it says here. It's got a foot switch here, so we can flip channels. I don't think, oh, maybe the original had that, but I don't think so. I haven't looked at an original. Let's assume it did. So we've got a send and return, and I believe that's a serial uh, loop. Oh, by the way, this, uh, this loop operates on a minus 10 dB basis, which is uh, far from the plus 4 of the pro. Now, moving on to the other end of the uh, the amplifier simple stuff got a HT fuse here always change it with the correct one won't you you, know, you don't want to light up don't get the cigarette paper out and things no you don't want to do any of that uh, so you've got your mains input there's also a fuse in there by the way which is the mains in fuse if you can see that which you have a lot of them these days and then we've got all this European uh, oh, stuff to talk about you've got CE approvals You've got Rush compliance, which we saw further back, by the way. You've got the don't dispose of. You've got all the things that really sort of matter, which some manufacturers don't bother to put on. Notice it's on the amplifier. It isn't on some box that they claim oh, makes it CE approved. And there's a quick shot of the, uh, the choke on this, uh, this amp. Uh, I always like to see these because these were in the originals, aren't they? Yeah, <laughs> you haven't got that. It will change the tone marginally, I think. So now we're taking a look around the front of the amp, and as you can see, we've got inimitable power. 
we've got uh, standby and on but we've also got this uh, very useful switch for high output or low now the thing is about this amp uh, they do make uh, a little 50 watt uh, but it uses uh, two tubes yeah and they say it sounds very different than this one this one sounds in my opinion uh, pretty cool actually but I was going to downgrade this amp uh, for, for a, the smaller one so I could uh, at least get in the house you know what I mean <laughs> and I didn't want to lug all that, that weight around but realistically I've got a half power or a high power so I can bring it down to this sort of 50 watts give or take and because it's got preamps it's pretty good you, you can play at low volumes but of course if you want to crank it up you can yeah the JCM 2550. I think it was 25 years in business and 50 years of Jim Marshall hacking away at it. Strangely enough, it doesn't say 2555X on the front. Okay, well, moving further along, we've hit on all the, uh, the controls, really. Uh, and these are all pretty boring, except for a couple. But we'll run through them. We've got a presence. Oh, by the way, these are the settings that I was using, just for your own info. Uh, I want to try the amp earlier. We've got a bass and a middle and a treble. Now, although it's two channels, we'll call it that, uh, it's all the same tone stack. So what you've got on one, you've got on the other, I guess. That's how it tends to work. And we've got an output master. But the output master can be pulled like this. Oh, look, I've got a reflection. <laughs> it can be pulled. To flip channels so you either got the lead channel or you haven't with it in it's on the lead channel this one here is the lead master so you can see i had it cranked reasonably high but that was in the 50 watt mode when i was messing around i did have it at 100 as well i backed this off a little bit and lastly we've got this uh input gain from the input that's just down there and again it's got a push pull and what that does is when you pull it out it'll, it'll give you a bit of a rhythm clip so you're getting a little bit more distortion in that sort of clean channel unlike some of these old plexis that unless they flat out you, you're screwed <laughs> so so with this uh, yeah it can give you a great rhythm tone so you could have that out and you could flip between channels uh, yeah, with the pedal. Oh, by the way, the pedal's supplied with it. Of course, the way I look at it. If it's good enough for Jim Marshall to put his name to it, I'm telling you now, it's good enough for you. <laughs> Don't think that it's, uh, oh, it's, it's a later model, it's inferior, it's this, it's that. Actually, the amplifier is uh, really cool. Uh, it's sort of JCM 800, but better. <laughs> Well, oh, some people might argue with that. Well, I'm back. That's a bit of a rundown of what's going on inside the chassis. As you can see, it's a, it's a pristine amp. And uh, it's been really, really well made. You can tell. It's, uh, you know, Marshall, some of the Marshall stuff I've seen. It hasn't always been perfect. Check some of my other reviews. Uh, and you'll see what I mean. Uh, especially when you look at the chassis. Oh my God, they're coming to get me. Oh, they've, they've got somebody else. Yeah, so really, really well-made amp. And I know it's made in England because I've seen them. <laughs> yeah. Does it sound like the old one? Well, in my opinion, it's pretty near. It's very near. Would you really want to go and spend a couple of grand? That's $3,000 to you other boys. A couple of grand in pounds, uh, maybe, just to get some old beaten up amp that you know seen better days uh, it's just not worth the effort get something like this and you've got something with reliability built into it that makes a lot of difference uh, especially with tube amps you don't want them chinese things do you yeah that's quality so that's a sort of quick rundown of the the chassis side of things uh what i'm gonna do is uh, bang it back in there and uh, we'll be back in a moment. Well, here we are, back 
up top. It's recased, it looks just like it did, and uh, everything's honky dory. So, what do I think about this amp so far? Well, I've already played it, I have to say that. And uh, when I played it, it sounds awesome. Especially if you crank it a bit. You can crank it on the 100 too, it just gives you a bit more headroom and stuff like that. But uh, anyway, out in the studio, it sounds fine. As I said earlier, it comes with its pedal and a uh, speaker lead. Always oh, include a speaker lead, very kindly. And there's its little pedal, it's one of them little single button things, so it's not really up to much, but it does work. I haven't tried it. Uh, I just keep it in the lead mode and crank it and then turn the guitar down. Yeah, just like a JCM 800 would be. Oh, it's a hybrid. <laughs> well, it's nearly a JCM 800, it's just got a bit more martial. I'm not going to harp on too much about what I've done with it. Uh, you need to think about what you're going to do with it. Now, most people, I say most, some people won't need any extra. Uh, drive with this amp, especially if you're playing live and that sort of stuff. But you know, when you get in the studio, sometimes things are a little bit different. And I, I, out of all the pedals, and this is a pedal that I've used over and over on different amps, and it's, it's about one of the best pedals I've got for drive, is the Exotic uh, SL Drive. Yeah, the Exotic SL Drive. You've seen it uh, sort of on some of the videos or reviewed, or I did review with Marty some time ago. It's in the list of videos somewhere down there. Yeah, so the SL Drive, the Super Lead Plexi equivalent from Exotic Effects, and that can drive the front end of this amp very nicely indeed. So you could actually hold an, you could do a Gary Moore. <laughs> in fact, me and the grandson did. Uh, we did a Gary Moore and held a, a note for about five minutes, which is incredible. Yeah, yeah, RIP Gary. Now it's one singular thing I found in the entire amp uh, that I thought wasn't quite where it should be. And it was this. Look at that up there. You can see that on the end of my finger. Yeah, that was a little piece of solder that was floating around inside the chassis. So you Marshall boys, bear that in mind. It, it's unlikely to do any harm because it's, it's going to be falling down to the bottom of the amp. But uh, when I pulled everything out, there it was, floating around inside. So I just decided to get rid while I could. That's the singular uh, issue I found on this amp. In its entirety, uh, even the price was great. I got it for a, a deal where somebody was selling it uh, new. But just, I'll call it clearance, but <laughs> it's hardly clearance. You can get them uh, cheaper than the £1,100 that they ask, which I think makes it a real, real good bargain. No problem gigging. No real problem at home either. So what would I give it as a score out of 10? Uh, well, you know, these older style amps aren't for everybody. Some people hate plexis and those sort of amps. I don't mind them, but they get a bit loud do the plexis. The, the JCM 800s I can live with because I've got some pedals. And I can live with this one too, uh, because this amp uh, doesn't really need pedals. But if it did, it's just that SL drive and a wah. And I, I really wouldn't need much else. It's got an effects loop, so we could put the rack through it and make it sound different. So I'm a little bit wary about using racks on them and things like that. I think overall, uh, it sounds pretty much like the original, in my opinion. I'm not perfect, but neither are you. Uh, it's got these great little features. Uh, it's got the loop. It's got that such high quality. I haven't seen this higher quality in a Marshall amp for some while. It's, you know, they've always had this bit of problem, or that bit of problem. But whoever's got this one together uh, really did get it together. So. Yeah, it's a 10 out of 10. And don't forget, this is the number one <laughs> JCM 2550-255X out there. You've seen the serial number. I'll just remind you again. It's there. The number one amp. Well, not quite. I know the truth, but you don't. <laughs> but it is the real serial number. You just have to go to my website to figure out what those numbers mean. Uh, I already know. So, music's coming up that way, and uh, don't forget to visit 
www.tonymackenzie.com uh, and no doubt this will be reviewed on there as soon as I get five minutes. I've had some personal problems and things uh, recently so, so I haven't been around much and uh, I haven't been able to dedicate any time to doing any of this but uh, well I'm back and I'm still doing it and uh, well, some of the things that are coming up are really quite nice really. Anyway, here's the music. I hope you like this review. Uh, takes a little while to do them. You know, costs me money to do it. I have to go and buy every damn product. And, uh, you know, I'll keep what I like and get rid of what I don't. So, here's the music. Until next time, thanks for watching. Now get out of here!
Thank you.